Staff Sergeant Ethan Caldwell crouched low behind the twisted wreckage of what used to be an Araxian assault vehicle. Plasma rounds sizzled overhead, their eerie blue glow illuminating the night sky of Outpost Delta-9. The acrid stench of burnt metal and flesh filled his nostrils, threatening to overpower the recyclers in his combat suit. Medic. We need a fucking medic over here, the desperate cry cut through the cacophony of battle, rising above the staccato of human railguns and the high-pitched whine of alien energy weapons. Ethan gritted his teeth. He was the only combat medic left in Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. The rest of his team had been wiped out in the initial Araxian assault. He keyed his calm, this is Doc Caldwell. What's your position? Northwest Quadrant, grid 2-3. We've got multiple casualties, including Sarge. Roger that. On my way, Ethan took a deep breath, mentally preparing himself for what was to come. He'd lost count of how many times he'd made this run, sprinting through a hailstorm of enemy fire to reach the wounded. Each time could be his last, but that didn't matter. What mattered were the lives he could save. He reached down, checking his med kit one last time. Biofoam, synthetic blood packs, nanosutures, trauma packs all present and accounted for. With practiced ease, he pulled out a stim shot and jabbed it into his thigh. The battlefield cocktail of adrenaline, painkillers, and focus enhancers surged through his system. Covering fire, Ethan bellowed into his calm. I'm coming out hot. The intensity of human weapons fire increased tenfold, forcing the Araxians to duck for cover. Ethan seized his moment. He vaulted over the wreckage and sprinted across the battlefield, his eyes constantly scanning for threats and obstacles. A plasma round struck dangerously close, the heat searing through his armor's outer layer. He didn't slow down. Another blast knocked him off his feet, but he rolled with the impact and kept moving. Nothing would stop him from reaching his objective. After what felt like an eternity, Ethan slid into cover beside a group of battered rangers. Their faces were grim, covered in dirt and blood. In the center lay Sergeant Kowalski, his chest a mess of burned flesh and shattered armor. Talk to me, Ethan demanded, already pulling out his diagnostic scanner. Private First Class Jenkins, his young face pale with shock, stammered out a report. Multiple plasma burns, possible internal injuries. He took a direct hit, pushing Ramirez out of the way. Ethan nodded, his hands moving with practiced precision as he began cutting away Kowalski's ruined armor. Sarge, can you hear me? Kowalski's eyes fluttered open, unfocused and glazed with pain. Doc, did we hold the line? We're holding, Sarge. Just focus on staying with us, Ethan turned to Jenkins. I need you to elevate his legs. Ramirez, keep pressure on this wound here. As Ethan worked, his mind briefly flashed back to his training. The countless hours spent in simulations, practicing procedures until they became second nature. The grueling physical conditioning that allowed him to function under the most extreme conditions. But nothing could truly prepare you for the reality of combat medicine. He pushed those thoughts aside, focusing entirely on the task at hand. His fingers danced across Kowalski's ravaged chest, applying biofoam to seal wounds and stabilize internal injuries. The synthetic polymer expanded, stopping the bleeding and providing crucial support to damaged organs. Vitals are stabilizing, Ethan muttered, more to himself than the others. But he's not out of the woods yet. A deafening explosion rocked their position, showering them with debris. Ethan instinctively threw himself over Kowalski, shielding his patient from further harm. Incoming Ramirez shouted, They're pushing hard. Ethan glanced up, seeing the terrifying sight of Araxian shock troops advancing on their position. Their insectoid forms moved with unnatural speed, plasma rifles spitting death. We need to move, Jenkins yelled, his voice cracking with fear. Ethan made a split-second decision. Negative. Kowalski can't be moved yet. If we try, he'll bleed out before we make it ten meters. He turned to Ramirez, the steel in his voice leaving no room for argument. You and Jenkins fall back to the secondary line. I'll stay with Sarge and keep him stable. But Doc, Doc, that's an order, soldier. Move out. As the others reluctantly retreated, Ethan pulled out his sidearm with one hand while continuing to work on Kowalski with the other. He knew their chances were slim, but he'd be damned if he'd abandon a patient. The first Araxian rounded the corner, its compound eyes gleaming with alien malice. 
Ethan didn't hesitate. He squeezed the trigger, the high-caliber round punching through the creature's exoskeleton. It fell with an inhuman shriek. More followed. Ethan fired again and again, each shot finding its mark, but there were too many. As he reached for a fresh magazine, he knew it was too late. Suddenly, the air was filled with a familiar whine. A barrage of missiles streaked overhead, slamming into the Araxian ranks with devastating effect. The alien advance crumbled under the onslaught. Ethan's calm crackled to life. This is Captain Vega of the Galactic Confederation Peacekeeping Force. We're here to assist. Over. Relief flooded through Ethan. The cavalry had arrived. As the sounds of battle began to fade, replaced by the whine of dropship engines, Ethan allowed himself a small smile. They had held the line. Kowalski would live to fight another day. A shadow fell over him, and he looked up to see a towering figure in unfamiliar armor. The alien is Zenthari, if he remembered his xenobiology correctly regarded him with a mixture of awe and respect. You are the human combat medic, the Zenthari asked, its translator struggling to convey the reverence in its tone. Ethan nodded wearily. Staff Sergeant Ethan Caldwell, United Earth Federation Army. The Zenthari's mandibles clicked in what Ethan assumed was their version of a smile. Your reputation precedes you, Sergeant. The galaxy speaks of human combat medics with great admiration. Your ability to function under fire. It is unparalleled. Ethan shrugged, uncomfortable with the praise. Just doing my job, sir. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a patient here who needs evac. As they loaded Kowalski onto a hover stretcher, Ethan couldn't help but reflect on the strange turn his life had taken. When he'd enlisted, he never imagined he'd end up as part of an interstellar war, let alone become some kind of legendary figure among alien races. But that was the reality of the galaxy they now lived in. Humanity, the newcomers to the galactic stage, had quickly made a name for themselves, and nowhere was that more apparent than in the field of combat medicine. Six months later, Ethan found himself in a very different environment. The stark white walls and sterile air of the Galactic Confederation's premier medical facility on Alpha Centauri Prime were a far cry from the mud and blood of the battlefield. He stood at attention, feeling uncomfortable in his dress uniform as various alien dignitaries filed into the conference room. He recognized some of the species Xanthari, Vulcran, even a couple of Araxians, now that the war was over. Others were completely foreign to him. A gruff voice beside him muttered, at ease before you sprain something, Doc. Ethan relaxed slightly, turning to see the scarred face of Sergeant Kowalski. The older man had made a full recovery, thanks in no small part to Ethan's battlefield care and the advanced medical technology of their alien allies. Still not used to all this pomp and circumstance, Sarge Ethan admitted. Kowalski chuckled. Yeah, well, get used to it. You're the poster boy for human combat medics now. The whole galaxy wants a piece of you. Before Ethan could respond, a hush fell over the room. A distinguished-looking Vulcran stepped up to the podium, its tentacles waving in what Ethan had learned was a gesture of respect. Esteemed colleagues, the Vulcran began, its words translated seamlessly through the room's audio system. We are gathered here today to discuss one of the most significant developments in galactic military doctrine in recent memory the integration of human combat medics into our joint forces. The Vulcran's eye stalk swiveled to focus on Ethan. Staff Sergeant Caldwell, would you please step forward? Ethan swallowed hard and approached the podium. He'd faced down hordes of Araxian shock troops without flinching, but public speaking still terrified him. Sergeant Caldwell. The Vulcran continued. Your actions during the Battle of Outpost Delta-9 have become legendary, but they are merely one example of the extraordinary capabilities that human combat medics bring to the battlefield. Would you care to share your perspective on what makes your kind so uniquely suited to this role? Ethan took a deep breath, gathering his thoughts. He thought back to his training, to the countless battles he'd survived, to the lives he'd saved and lost. With all due respect, sir, he began, his voice steady despite his nerves, I don't believe humans are uniquely suited to combat medicine. What we are is uniquely motivated. A murmur ran through the crowd. Ethan pressed on. Every sentient species values life. Every culture has healers. But humans, we've spent millennia perfecting the art of warfare. We've become so efficient at killing each other that we've had to become equally efficient at saving lives. 
He paused, making eye contact with various members of the audience. Our combat medics train just as hard as our warriors. We're taught to run towards danger, not away from it. To function under the most extreme conditions imaginable. It's not because we're fearless or invincible. It's because we understand that in those crucial moments, our actions can mean the difference between life and death. Ethan gestured to Kowalski. Every life we save is a victory. Every soldier we patch up and send home is a testament to our skill and determination. It's not about glory or recognition. It's about preserving life in the midst of chaos and destruction. The room was silent now, all eyes fixed on the human medic. If there's one thing that sets us apart, Ethan concluded, it's our ability to compartmentalize, to shut out the fear, the doubt, the horror of our surroundings, and focus entirely on the task at hand. We're not superhuman. We're just humans who've been pushed to our limits and found a way to keep going. As he stepped back from the podium, the room erupted in a cacophony of alien vocalizations. It took Ethan a moment to realize they were applauding. The Vulcran raised its tentacles for silence. Thank you, Sergeant Caldwell, for that illuminating perspective. It is precisely this combination of skill, determination, and psychological resilience that makes human combat medics so valuable to our joint operations. The alien turned to address the entire assembly. As we move forward with the integration of human medics into our forces, let us remember that we are not just gaining skilled healers. We are gaining individuals who embody the very best qualities of their species' courage, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to preserving life. As the meeting continued, discussing logistics and training programs, Ethan found his mind wandering. He thought of all the medics who hadn't made it, who had given their lives so that others might live. He thought of the countless soldiers he'd treated, some of whom he'd saved, others he'd lost. In the end, that's what it all came down to. Not accolades or alien admiration, but the simple, profound act of saving a life, of being there in someone's darkest moment and giving them a chance to see another day. As the galaxy marveled at the prowess of human combat medics, Ethan Caldwell knew the truth. They weren't superheroes or legends. They were just men and women doing their duty, armed with skill, determination, and the unshakable belief that every life was worth fighting for. And in a galaxy torn by conflict, that belief might just be the most powerful weapon of all.